Chronic granulomatous disease is a genetic condition that causes a mutation in the NADPH oxidase enzyme. Let's review the basics of chronic granulomatous disease. Let's first review the basics of phagocytosis. So here's a phagocyte such as a neutrophil or a macrophage. When a phagocyte encounters an antigen, it will engulf the antigen and package it into a phagosome. Inside the phagocytes, there are also important organelles called lysosomes. Lysosomes contain important granules which are important in the defense against pathogens. Phagosomes and lysosomes will come together and form phagolysosomes. So phagolysosomes contain the antigen now. Let's now zoom into the phagolysosomes. So here we've got the macrophage with the phagolysosome containing the antigen and the lysosomal granules. On the membrane of the phagolysosome, there is an enzyme called the NADPH oxidase enzyme. This enzyme converts oxygen into superoxide radicals. These superoxide radicals can attack the antigens and help destroy them. The superoxide radicals can combine with hydrogen ions and form hydrogen peroxide. This reaction is catalyzed by superoxide dismutase. The hydrogen peroxide can also attack the pathogen and help destroy it. Because these reactions are oxygen dependent, the use of superoxide radicals and hydrogen peroxide to destroy the antigens is called the respiratory burst. It's important to realize that some pathogens are catalase positive organisms, which means that they produce catalase enzymes. Catalase positive organisms include Staphylococcus, Klebsiella, Aspergillus, and many other species. Because they produce catalase, catalase breaks down hydrogen peroxide, so these organisms can defend against the attack of hydrogen peroxide. Usually the phagocytes produce enough hydrogen peroxide to overwhelm the effects of catalase enzymes. So usually this respiratory burst is enough to deal with both catalase positive and catalase negative organisms. There are other mechanisms that phagocytes have for intracellular killing. These lysosomal granules contain many important enzymes such as myeloperoxidase. Myeloperoxidase breaks down hydrogen peroxide. This hydrogen peroxide is inside the pathogens and is produced as a waste product by the pathogens. So when the myeloperoxidase targets this hydrogen peroxide, it will break it down into a toxic metabolite, which will destroy the pathogens. It's important to realize that catalase positive organisms will have less hydrogen peroxide inside them. This is because the catalase enzymes that they produce will break down the hydrogen peroxide that they produce as a waste product. So they will have less hydrogen peroxide inside them. So there will be less substrate for the myeloperoxidase to bind to. So this is why myeloperoxidase enzymes are more effective against catalase negative organisms. The lysosomal granules contain other enzymes such as lysozymes, lactoferrin, defensins, and hydrolytic enzymes. And these all can cause damage to the pathogens and help the phagocyte destroy the pathogen. So these are all the methods that the phagocytes have to cause intracellular killing of pathogens. Let's now see what happens in chronic granulomatous disease. Chronic granulomatous disease is an inherited deficiency in one of the subunits of NADPH oxidase enzyme. This inheritance could be autosomal recessive or X-linked. As the NADPH oxidase enzymes are not working, oxygen will not be converted into superoxide radicals, and this means that there won't be much hydrogen peroxide being produced. So as superoxide radicals and hydrogen peroxide is not being produced, the effect of the respiratory burst will be reduced. So the phagocytes lose their most effective way of killing pathogens. Let's have a look at the other mechanisms. The myeloperoxidase enzymes will still be working. Let's consider two situations. Let's consider if a patient is infected with a catalase negative organism and the phagocyte engulfs this pathogen. This pathogen will produce a lot of hydrogen peroxide as a waste product and they do not have catalase enzymes that will break down this hydrogen peroxide. So the myeloperoxidase enzymes will have a lot of substrate to bind to and will be able to kill the pathogens. So the phagocyte will still be able to deal with catalase negative organisms despite the lack of a respiratory burst. Let's now consider a situation where the patient is infected with a catalase positive organism. This is much more problematic. When the phagocytes engulf this pathogen, the pathogen will still produce a lot of hydrogen peroxide as a waste product. But because they have catalase enzymes, the catalase enzymes will break down this hydrogen peroxide. So the myeloperoxidase enzymes will not have much substrate to bind to. So the myeloperoxidase will not be able to kill the pathogen efficiently. This is why patients with chronic granulomatous disease are at particular risk of infections from catalase positive organisms. Again, to summarize why, the phagocytes will not be able to use their respiratory burst or myeloperoxidase enzymes to kill the catalase positive organisms. 
and they will only be able to use oxygen independent mechanisms such as lysozymes and lactoferrin that come from the lysosomes to help kill the pathogens. However, these mechanisms are usually not sufficient to kill the pathogen. So patients with chronic granulomatous disease will suffer from chronic recurrent infections, usually from catalase positive organisms. Because the phagocytes are not able to kill the pathogens, they will eventually start to form granulomas, which is a key finding in patients with chronic granulomatous disease. In terms of diagnosing chronic granulomatous disease, a test called the dihydrorhodamine 123 test can be done. The way this test works is that it will detect the amount of functional NADPH oxidase in the blood. So the more NADPH oxidase in the blood, the more green fluorescence can be seen in the test. So in chronic granulomatous disease, due to the low levels of functional NADPH oxidase enzymes, there will be decreased or no green fluorescence seen on this test. Another test that can be used is called the Nitro Blue Tetrazoleum Dye Reduction Test. This test detects the levels of superoxide radicals. So a positive result will lead to a change in the color of the dye. In chronic granulomatous disease, due to the lack of superoxide radicals, there will be a negative result in the Nitro Blue Tetrazoleum Dye Reduction Test. Finally, genotyping can be done to confirm the diagnosis. In terms of the treatment of chronic granulomatous disease, Prophylactic antibiotics are given due to the high risk of these patients developing recurrent infections, particularly from catalase-positive organisms. Interferon gamma is also given because it's been shown to help stimulate the respiratory burst in phagocytes.